How do you play Balance Druid if you are a beginner? You start with the talents of course, but also learning how to manage your dots, single target and AoE rotations. Is gear even important? Let's check out all of these things one at a time. We are going to start it simple with the single target talents for the raid. As we go through all of the builds, you'll notice that 80 to 90% of your talent choices will be the same, with a few exceptions deciding your overall profile and performance. One particular talent to look out for here is Warrior of Aloon. You will play this one only in single target, which may be counterintuitive since it affects Starfire, an AoE ability. But that's only if you don't think about eclipses. The main reason you pick this one is to use it just as an eclipse ends so you can quickly get into the next solar eclipse by spamming the two instant starfires. You will sit on the third one for only one instant starfire when you need to get into your next solar eclipse or use it whenever you have to move as a source of damage rather than just not casting anything. This talent will be the only one actually impacting your rotation so not worth going into each other one for now. When AoE is on the table your options are vast. There are plenty of flexible talents to play with and each give an incremental damage increase that you may or may not care about. I won't go over all of them, but there is one build you might want to know about and that is the Council Fight build. You can play this on any AoE fight, although realistically it's only really good here. The reason I am giving you this build is because this particular boss fight is Balance's best fight and Balance is the best spec for this fight in terms of damage output. Outside of some of the regular talent options, you will notice you are playing Stellar Flare. Once again, Council is the only boss where you will be playing this, at this point anyway, and the damage difference between you and any other spec will be huge. It's a little bit more plate spinning than what you would normally do, so if it's too much and you are fine giving up a bit of damage for a less stressful build, then you can play the Mythic Plus version, which has the most amount of interchangeable options out of all of the talent builds so far. Let me be clear. If you are picking up the spec right now, or you are planning to have fun and chilling keys, you can play this and do incredibly well. All the talent changes you can make will give you very small bonuses that only compound when you start doing harder and harder content. The mobs have to live long enough for your dots to ramp up, for your procs to start procking and so on. The AoE is incredible for balance, but it takes a long time to build up and with specs like Havoc, Red, Outlaw that just burst the first few seconds, you will likely not have time to do much. That's why I recommend you take Fury of Valoon here as the identity of this build since you can play Full Moon, Mushrooms and other things as well. Fury of Valoon with the capstone to buff it will give you more upfront damage and general AoE. For bosses, it's less than taking its new moon counterpart, but it will create a much more pleasant experience to run dungeons and even play it in raids on AoE by swapping Fury with New Moon. And with that, I will make a short note about the talent swaps if you want to optimize your builds a bit more, but know that this is not mandatory unless you are pushing Mythic Raid or keys over 22s, 23s, in my experience at least, so don't stress too much about it. But for optimization, I mentioned New Moon with Fury of Valoon can be swapped if you want either more single target or AoE. Astral Smolder, Nature's Grace and Power of Goldrin are talents you can put 1 or 2 points in depending on what you want to accomplish. Astral Smolder benefits from 2 points in higher fortified keys since the dot from it will start to be more relevant when it comes to its damage since the 1 point is usually just placed to activate Waning Twilight. Power of Goldrin is your single target machine, ideally always with 1 point in but you can put 2 for more boss damage. Nature's Grace is usually something you can sacrifice to free up the point for Smolder. It's still good, the haste is nice, but really shines more in single target than AoE, so maybe if you still need boss damage, this is something you can take. Wild Mushroom is also an alternative for more upfront damage and a simple way to have Waning Twilight without relying on crits. And lastly, the two capstones can also be swapped depending on what you need more. Elune's Guidance is better for big and sustained AoE since the resource cost reduction will add up, while Radiant Moonlight will improve your new moon 
and Fury of Valoon, so they do their single target and burst AoE respectively a lot better. Going into your rotation, you start by precasting two Wraths to get into your first Eclipse. This is usually possible if you start 4 seconds before the pool and at max distance. You ideally want to consume your two set buffs before you pop your Incarnation cooldown. Apply Moonfire and Sunfire to the target. Pop your Incarnation with your Racials and Trinkets. Use your first New Moon charge. Make sure to consume your Dream State charges before Incarnation drops. After you open, you want to make sure Moonfire and Sunfire never drop from your target. Make sure to get into Solar Eclipse as quickly as possible. Ideally, once your current Eclipse drops, your next two spells should be Starfire. Don't cap on Astral Power by pressing Star Surge. Don't cap on new Moon Charges and try to dump them during Eclipse with Full Moon being saved for Arcanic Pulsar procs or Incarnation. When you have 6 or fewer seconds left of your current Eclipse, press Warrior of Valoon and use the two instant Starfires to generate the new Solar Eclipse or for when you need to move and cannot cast anything else worthwhile like Refreshing Dots. Use Wrath to generate Astral Power as a last thing. In AoE, make sure to have every target that's gonna be alive for the duration of your dots dotted up first. Pop your Incarn ASAP or get into Lunar Eclipse on 3 or more targets or Solar Eclipse on 2 or fewer targets. Dump Astral Power with Starfall on 3 or more targets and Star Surge every other time. Use Fury of a Loon on cooldown, cast Starfires in Lunar Eclipse on 3 or more targets or Wraths in Solar Eclipse on 1 or 2 targets. When it comes to the new tier set, your 2 set bonus empowers your Wraths and Starfires in a few ways. It's ideal you never waste these buffs since they can override each other. Firstly, you get two charges when you enter combat. Usually you use these two charges to get into your first Eclipse. You get two more charges when you pop Incarnation as well. So if you miss your first two and use Incarn, you just lost them. You get two more charges when an Eclipse ends. The way to use Warrior of Valoon is to assure your next Solar Eclipse happens as quick as possible by reducing the cast time of the next two Starfires necessary to get there. The reason you pop it when you have 6 or fewer seconds less of your current Eclipse is because once you do, the spell goes on cooldown even if you don't use your charges and then you have enough time to spend the last charge to get into your third Solar Eclipse faster. The instant Starfires are not a DPS gain in single target if you just cast them randomly. They are good to get into Solar or if you have to move and refreshing Moonfire and Sunfire does not make a big difference. Don't overthink it, just use Warrior Valoon to get a quicker Solar Eclipse and you are good to go. For your gear, you want Intellect first or generally the highest eye level gear since that's where the most Intellect will be on. After this, you want Mastery and lots of it. After Mastery, you will go for Haste with priority but Crit isn't the end of the world. Versatility is your worst stat in this sense. This stat priority is a simplistic way to approach gearing. It will work just fine until you start to hit your cap on eye level and if you are chilling and doing average-ish keys and raid bosses, it's also going to be fine. If you really want to make sure you equip the best possible gear options, you will need to sim your gear choices on raidbots.com. Stat weights, add-ons like pawn are something that we just do not recommend you to use. Similar to this, when you enchant your gear, prioritize mastery. With a skillful limited diamond and keen Neltharite gems for your sockets, Devotion of Mastery will be your ring enchants of choice, while the rest of the gear will have generic options. Get waking stats on your chest and frozen spell thread for your legs, Sophic Devotion on your weapon and Avoidance enchants on your cloak and bracers. For your feet and belt, you can get the Stamina versions, Watcher's Loam and Shadowed Belt Clasp. You can also craft embellished gear if you want to, the boost is good, but since crafted gear cannot get to max eye level, for you as a balance it won't be the best possible option, unless you just cannot get gear at a higher eye level than the crafted ones. If you do decide to go this route, Shadow Flame Tempered Armor Patch is a good place to start by getting two of them. Or you can get the Toxic Thorn Foot Wraps with the Toxified Armor Patch. 
If you have 8 sockets, the Lariat is also a good option. Keep in mind that these seem to be very small DPS gains and if you are not pushing content or playing severely undergeared while swimming in all the gold, getting these will not make a big difference or any difference whatsoever. That's not the same for the trinkets though, which can be a massive powerhouse. The first best in slot is Pip's Emerald Friendship Badge. This drops in the raid, gives a bunch of stats and it's all passive. Mirror of Fractured Tomorrows will be your second best in slot and a perfect fit with your incarnation since their cooldowns will align. The third option you can go for is Balefire Branch. This one has a 1.5 minute cooldown so you should press it once between each incarnation use. You might get this and Mirror as well or any other two on use trinkets. Depending on what cooldown they have, you can either just press them when they are available prioritizing the better one with incarnation always or use the second one with your first arcanic pulsar window and if you even end up using a full moon during that window as well the damage gain will be noticeable outside of these trinkets you can just do whatever realistically if your trinkets are not two of the three just mentioned it's all meh and whatever but do try to get the ones i told you about and you will be gucci we cover the basics here, but there's more to go for when it comes to balance. Big shout out to dreamgrove.gg, the wowhead and icy veins guides for balance that compile more detailed info if you are interested in pushing your balance to the next level, with the links down in the description. And balance is not the only guide we have out. Check out our unholy death knight next by clicking here. If you thought unholy was ever difficult or Intimidating, Marcelian made it way easier to understand and quick to pick up, so what are you waiting for?